Hello there YouTube, welcome to my Akai GX625. I've had the machine since December last year, but it's been well overdue a service. Um, however, there are no faults with the machine apart from a very crackly line inputs and output uh, control, which to clean them properly, the preamp PCB has to be removed. So I thought to myself, well, in, in doing that, I may as well replace the notorious um, 458 transistors, which in this machine there are 12. And whilst doing that, I thought I'd replace all of the electrolytic capacitors on the preamp board. As you can see, it's a bit of an effort to take the machine apart, but here it is, all dismantled and placed upside down, and I've just removed the preamp PCB. Now it's time to vacuum out 35 years worth of dust and human skin and other crap that's accumulated in the machine over the years. So it's a good old Henry vacuum cleaner and a paintbrush job. piece of tape over the VU meters so they don't move around too much and cause any damage whilst I carry out the work. So now the work begins, I'm desoldering the first transistor, which in this case happens to be a TR6. I have the circuit diagram and a PCB layout, which is from the service manual, which is available for everybody through Hi-Fi Engine, as most of you will well know. Okay, so that's TR6 removed. That is TR6 on the left channel. Now you can see where it has came from. The solid white block is the base. And obviously the center pin is the emitter and the far right pin is the collector. Now you notice that the other channel is laid out ever so well in this machine. And to make things easy, the transistors are the opposite way around. Now this is the replacement transistor I'm using, the 2240, which the pin configuration is exactly the same. So the transistor is placed exactly the same way around as the original one came out from. Okay, so here we go, the first transistor is being soldered in and only another 11 left to go.
So here we go, we'll skip forward now. The last transistor has been soldered in and I'm just cutting the excess pin length from the bottom of the board. Um, what I've got, I've got the circuit diagram and I'm just going to cross off, just as I go, I've been crossing off the components I've been replacing. Now this happens to be the very last um, transistor of the 12 that needed replacement. There are other transistors in the circuit However, I couldn't find a decent um, a decent replacement for them. It was the 2SC945. Now, I did have some 2SC945s, but they the, I don't quite understand the numbers after the component were different to the original, so I didn't go ahead and change those. Now, the best thing to do now is to sort of loosely assemble it and go for a test run. So here we go, first test run. I'm using some rubbish old show tunes um, tape. Um, the sound quality is not particularly good but I just wanted to test with a test tone that everything was working on the preamp and also going onto the tape. Now the tape is a little bit hissy obviously because the machine isn't biased for that kind of tape but it does show the machine is working. So the machine works, so here we go, start of a mammoth task of replacing all of the electrolytic capacitors, which um, if I remember rightly, approximately 84 capacitors to be replaced. Uh, lots of 10 microfarads at 25 volts, um, lots of 47 microfarad capacitors. So just take your time with these make sure you replace the new capacitor in the correct polarity and there is there is kind of a a, um, a wing um, shown on the top of the circuit board where the capacitor goes into now the wing represents the negative side of the capacitor so when you put your new capacitors in the longer leg is the positive leg and obviously the shorter one is the negative and the negative is also indicated on the side of the capacitor. Uh, the, again the, the, um, the circuit is laid out symmetrical between the left and the right channels and always the, uh, the left channel capacitor is the opposite way around to the right channel capacitor the same way as the transistors the, um, the left transistor was one way around and the right channel was the opposite way around so just take your time with this
so it's quite late into the evening now and I've finished the capacitors I have tested the machine and it works perfectly the only thing I forgot to mention when you do test the machine you do need to at least secure one screw between the P the preamp PCB and the main case to, to earth it correctly otherwise you'll get a lot of humming problems but here we go just starting to put the machine back together now and get ready for the final test so here we are it's now the following morning it did take a long time to change out of components and I was so tired as you can see there is one huge handful of capacitors however now the entire preamp board has got new electrolytic capacitors all those components were 35 maybe a little bit more 35 plus years old so a good job well done I calibrated the machine last night I've got a few reels of brand new SM911 tape so I've calibrated the machine for that tape and I was absolutely blown away by the sound again there, there wasn't a fault with the machine beforehand however now it is, it is amazing the machine sounds absolutely amazing so I'm just threading the tape up there now always difficult in front of the camera so hit and record now switch to source set the levels so here we go turn up the level a little bit of 80s music now you might remember this track from Nightmare on Elm Street too so there we go there's the source and that's what's coming off of the tape not that you'll hear m much difference over your YouTube and the camera's microphone so there it is running at three and three quarters inches per second, which is a speed really I would never ever use. Just thought I'd try it. So back to seven and a half inches per second. So that's what's coming off of the tape. Back to the source. Again, there was no noise at all on the source. And from the tape. Now I was trying the memory rewind however I forgot to zero the counter so the tape needed threading again. So just watch the final demonstration of the machine. Now there will be the calibration uh, calibration video coming up next. I've got to edit that together but I, I went through the calibration of the machine and after that I will do a, a full video of the machine in operation and I'll connect the line output of the, the machine directly to the sound card so you can hear the sound as it, as it should be so look out for some further videos but please remember I'm just, I'm just a hi-fi enthusiast I'm not an audiophile, I'm not a service engineer I've just, just done this job just by picking up various um, snippets of knowledge from uh, what I've done in the past so I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching